Okay, so I'm going to say we can go ahead and start. Um, there are meant to be seven people joining in this session, and so far we only have two of you. Um, but I know that there is load shedding for a few people, um, so some of them may have challenges in joining us today um, and may only be able to watch the recording. So we will get going. So today I will be emceeing the session. Um, and I think Tanya, you were at the last one. Stefan, maybe this is the first time you're joining us, or were you at the last one? I was um, at the last one. You're at the last one. Okay, great. Well, it's lovely to have the two of you online. Um, and so today, Yaki will be speaking on still struggling with engagement, which is a really important topic. It will be one hour long until 10 o'clock. Um, you are welcome to ask questions and to type questions in if you have any. So I'm going to hand over to you, Yaki. Great stuff. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome, everyone. And it's fantastic to have you here. So, yes, today our uh, topic is about engagement and what do you do to ensure that people actually uh, see your stuff and engage with you and to know what uh, you want to tell them. So uh, a lot of us have all these pages, the Facebook page and the Instagram account, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but we're wondering why people are not clicking and liking and sharing. So can you all see the first slide of the presentation, Natalie? Can you see that? Yes. Okay, great. So um, Natalie has introduced me. Yapi is my name and I'm on Twitter as Yapi S and on Instagram as Yapi S. Um, so let's just jump right in why you are on social media in the first place. So depending on whether you try to sell something, you're a business, you just want to create awareness of your organization, your charity, your NGO, your radio station, your mission service. Um, you want to tell people exactly where we are. You know, we're focusing on this group of people and our mission is to uh, reach those people. You want to position yourself. Um, you want to make sure that people know your brand after a while. This is what our name stands for. Then you want to drive people from your social media to your website where they can learn more information, see upcoming events, uh, maybe download an article you've written, maybe even press a button to donate. Um, and you just want to tell your story. So these are all the reasons why any organization, be it a, a, a small one-man business uh, running from home, a multi-conglomerate mission organization in a church. These are primarily the reasons why people are on social media. But a lot of these things you can do via print, via TV, via radio as well. And in my humble opinion, the two main reasons why you want to do this on social media is because you can gain people's trust. They keep on seeing the information. You're communicating with them. You answer their questions. They see that what you are saying is true and real and the opportunity for engagement, which is why we're here today. Um, I can read a great article in the newspaper like I did on Sunday and I like it. And the only thing I can do about it is say to my wife, hey, let me tell you about this article. And she's like, oh man, I'm not interested in the growth of Discovery Vitality or Discovery Health share price. So, so often, you know, when you read something or you listen on the radio, it's great, but that opportunity for engagement is lacking. And social media provides that. It provides the opportunity for your users to engage with you. But the question you ask is, well, I'm posting stuff, but no one is engaging. And I want to show you a few things that you can do to ensure that more people will engage with you while you're on social media. I think it's important to highlight five social media principles before we proceed so you understand what social media is all about. And in my mind, the key principles are number one, the content. You may say, oh, well, that's a foolish thing to say. Of course, it's content, you know. 
But people forget about that. They forget that it's all about what you are putting out there. And people are going to be interested or not. They can engage or not. They're going to tell their friends or not based on the stuff that you put out there. The quality, the type, the timing, uh, the shareability, and we're going to come to that a bit later. Conversation, like I said, social media allows for a conversation, whereas radio and TV can initiate, but then social media can take it further. So especially if you run a radio station, people can listen, but now they want to debate the topic. People don't always call in. A lot of stations don't even take people to uh, take uh, calls. So you can actually start that conversation and say, hey, if you have an opinion to share about this, why don't you jump onto our Facebook page? We post a question there and let's see what you say. People want to converse, have conversations. Nothing is going to happen unless you have a strategy and your strategy is going to determine where you're going to go. Do we just want to grow our followers? Do we want more people to engage? Do we want people to listen to our station, come to our events, buy our t-shirts, come to my church, donate money, uh, support the cause, uh, arrive for a volunteering uh, uh, um, uh, outreach? What, what do you want to achieve? Maybe it's more than one of those. But my suggestion is that you write that down and you have at least a one-year strategy and you break it up into manageable chunks of a month at a time. And you say, by the end of the year, we want, I don't know, to reach a thousand people. Okay, divide that. Okay, let's make it 1,200 people. Divide that by 12. Oh, we must reach 100 people a month. What are we going to do to reach 100 people a month? Then at the end of the year, you sit, you review what you've done, and you use that as a basis for the following year. Hey, we only reached 900. What did we do wrong? We reached 1,500. Wow, that's a fantastic. Let's up our target for next year. Be creative. People like interesting videos, good stories, beautiful photos, animated GIFs. Try and find stuff that's creative. There's a lot of stuff to copy. Other people have done great things. And you say, hey, man, someone's already done that. They've already made a nice video. Let me just post it in here. That thing, that dreaded thing for me on uh, WhatsApp groups is that forwarded message I get. And then if I get that video that says forwarded multiple times, I make a rule not to watch it at all. Okay, that's just me. But forwarded multiple times probably means someone else has already forwarded to me. And now you think like, wow, it's your video that you're sending to me. So please, when you can, be creative, come up with your own content, your own designs, take your own photos, get your own designer. If not, go to a, 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 a design app, but be the creative one rather than copying from others who are creative. And then analyze. I'm going to tell you to do something. You're going to do it. Is it working? Is it not working? Every single social media channel, if you look to the right end of the screen there, those are, that's just a screenshot of my phone. But LinkedIn, YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, every single one of them provide a free analytics service, which means stats. So I can go in the back end of any of those and see so many people clicked, so many people liked, so many people shared. So based on my analysis of what worked, I'm going to be posting more stuff next time. So if you want to make sure you get engagement, go and see which of your posts have generated the most engagement. And then you post more like that. I mentioned content very, uh, as the very first uh, uh, um, point in the previous slide that this for me, is the number one component of social media. And I believe if you don't have a plan, it's, it's just a wish. What do you want to share? Do you know? Do you even have a content strategy? Do you even have something called content pillars? Do you even know what the things are that your organization stands for? And how often you want to put it out? 
Do you want to just educate people? Do you want to tell them about events, inform them of stuff that's happening? CRM, customer relations management. So you want to look after your existing followers or clients or customers or members or listeners. You want to just market yourself. You want to promote a specific day, event, T-shirt, uh, show, um, concert. Do you actually need someone, whether it be a full-time staff member or a volunteer? You have people on your page who like what you're saying. They follow you. Why shouldn't you start there? Hey, people, we know you love our station. We know you love what we are doing. We are looking for a volunteer to help us, blah, blah, blah. We are looking for someone who can do this. Even if it's just, I don't know, we're looking for someone with a bucky that can help us next weekend to move our office to another new premises. You can do that on your social media. Maybe you want to motivate. Motivate anything from, hey, a daily scripture verse to a voice clip to maybe something you're sharing from Christianity Works or an Angus Bachan clip or or you create your own. And it's also just news. Hey, did you know we are doing this next month? Hey, we'd like to announce this. So my suggestion is that you take all of those things into account and you plan a monthly content calendar around that. On Monday, we're going to post something about news. On Wednesday, we're going to post about a our, about our new event. On Friday, we're going to post about recruitment. You write the content, you plan the creative. And if you can get into this uh, mode of planning content a month in advance, it will save you a great deal of time and you'll start seeing some genuine engagement into your content because you are planning. Okay, I hear what you say. Oh, it's going to take a lot of time. Yes, the first one is going to take a lot of time. Because we'd like to usually finish the content for the entire following month by the last week of the current month. So you say, but I have no idea what's going to happen three weeks from now. I said to someone else the other day, I'll challenge you. Sit down with me for five minutes and I will get it out of you. So what are you doing next week? No, I don't know. Um, okay, didn't you say you had a meeting? Yeah, I had a meeting with someone talking about a new show. Oh, okay, put it in there. Next week, we'll be meeting. Oh, okay, what do you, no, usually every Friday we have a casual day. Okay, put that in there. Didn't you say you're going to go to that conference or go to that Louis Giglio event? Yes, okay, so tell people you're going and maybe you can make a video clip when you're there. And so you start unpacking the stuff that's happening in your organization and you start planning a content calendar around those points so some tips on creating a good content calendar is to plan it at least a month in advance it is a challenge but once you spend time getting that content right you'll realize that it's worth the effort ensure that it is in sync or in line with the other initiatives sometimes the person who's in charge of the social media is not the same person who's also doing marketing is maybe not the same person who plans events. And it happens too often where they each do something uh, differently. The social media person is sitting there thinking, what's happening? What's happening? Uh, how can I come up with an idea? And the next day you hear, oh, yeah, did you know we're hosting that event or we're sponsoring that event or we have an outside broadcast? Hey, but why did you not tell me? So once you start compiling this, uh, this content calendar, if you're not a one man show, like I am, then talk to others and say, hey, have you got something planned? Have you got something planned? Where are you going? What is your itinerary looking like? What events are on your calendar? And let's make sure we have a calendar that is all encompassing and includes everything that's happening with an organization. You heard me talk about content pillars. So the content pillars are the various things that you are going to base your content around. I advise that you have four, maybe five as a maximum. And these could be things like local events, um, motivational messages, uh, employee of the month, um, uh, our latest initiatives, um, 
causes we support. Okay, then I just threw out five. So maybe you say, we're always going to talk about those five things. Then when someone comes in here from the side and say, hey, did you see the petrol price just went down? Or it's just going up? Don't you want to post something about that? I say, whoa, sorry. People can read that on News24 or everywhere else. That's not part of the content we post. Oh, oh, oh what, what do you think of the, the election results? Whoa, whoa, whoa. We're not doing that type of stuff. That doesn't form part of our content calendar. So it both guides you and it sort of also um, uh, protects you against parties in your organization that want to flood you with content that is not according to your calendar and, of course, what people expect. When you plan your calendar, make sure you have the text written in. So a temptation is just to say, okay, on Wednesday, a week from today, 8 March, uh, we'll be saying something about our upcoming event. And you post it in there. And Wednesday comes, and now you're like, oh, shucks. I don't actually know what to say. So when you're sitting there and planning it, write the details out. So that when the day comes, the content is all there and it's easy to post. I'm going to tell you about scheduling later so you don't actually have to post it on the day that you want it to be seen. I Let's say, for instance, I have a message and the message is, let's say it's about an event. Okay, let's say there's a concert coming up. Um, I can share that on Facebook and on Twitter and on Instagram about this concert coming up. But I will most likely have different images and definitely different type of text. So I'm not saying you can't share the same message across the platforms. What I'm saying here in the top, if you read the text, don't duplicate. So I'm not a fan of taking the same thing exactly and connecting my Instagram account to my Facebook account, to my Twitter account. And it looks exactly the same across all three because my audience on each platform is different. Some of the traditional churches here where I live still have the morning service and the evening service. And the morning service is the traditional one where people go with suits and the evening service, they go to a hall where they go with short sleeve shirts and they're allowed to play a guitar there. Yes, that still happens. So it can be the same message from the same organization, but they're talking to two different audiences. So please keep that in mind when you want to post the same thing across all platforms. Huge gripe of mine, someone designs a flyer that they want to hand out let's call it the church on Sunday. They take that same design and they say, put that on Instagram and put that on Facebook and put it on Twitter and YouTube and Snapchat and TikTok. So I can go on. But each of those platforms have their own design guidelines in terms of the dimensions. So please don't think you can take one image and just slap it across all the platforms. It will not look good. And actually it will be counterproductive and will do your organization's name and brand harm. So what is a boost? Okay, a boost is what I get in the mornings when I drink some vitamin C before I go for a run. But in this case, it is an ad. That's when you run a social media platform. Excuse me, let's take Facebook and let's say for instance, you have, I don't know, a thousand people will follow your Facebook page. Every time you post something, it's exposed to that thousand. Please make sure you understand it doesn't mean that all thousand will see it, but at least those thousand can see it. But when you've done a post and the bottom you click boost, then immediately you can advertise that post to an audience outside of the people who are currently following you on the page. And then it says, Target them by via demographics, what city, what, uh, 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 what age, what gender, and then people other than those who follow you will see your content. So that's a great opportunity to get more engagement because sometimes 
there's something that's relevant to a greater audience and people simply just didn't know about your page and now they see it and they can engage with it with that one post or they can then decide wow i like what i see here let me start following this page often we get lazy and we just post a photo but that you know you can post photos animated gifts slideshows um, you know animated gifts the things that move um, carousels videos so please make an effort especially when it comes to something like instagram that you don't just post a single photo you can post multiple photos you can do a video you can do a story a reel a boomerang a layout so you have multiple options so experiment with those to see where you get the most engagement in fact if you use the meta business suite for facebook there is an opportunity for you in content posting to do something which is called a b split testing and you put two different images up for the same content and you press post and then facebook will show both to your audience over a 24-hour period and then the one that got the most traffic the most engagement will then be used to continue that post so you simply don't know until you start testing do people like a pink photo or a blue photo do they like it if i type it in caps or lowercase i don't know do they like it if it's a video or a gif so keep on experimenting to see because ultimately you want engagement you want more people to interact with your content and if you're going to spend time and effort maybe even money to plan a content calendar a month in advance the minimum you want to see is people engaging people clicking like and commenting and clicking the share button otherwise week after week you scroll through you see i have a hundred two three four five a thousand people on my facebook my instagram my twitter TikTok, whatever and no one's even reacting to it that can be very disheartening and but it means that you are doing something wrong okay uh, natalie will you uh, allow that person in thank you very much get your teams by and we spoke about that already create your designs in advance schedule your posts where possible and i'm going to talk to you a little bit later about how to schedule posts fortunately for you and me i don't have to sit at my computer at seven o'clock in the evening to press send if i want that message to go off at seven or 10 or 11 or 12. now i can just schedule it a week two weeks three weeks a month two three months in advance i can post stuff you might say oh well i don't know what's going to happen in three months but you do know for instance, uh, yeah, on my desk is lying the application form for the 2023 ICM conference. Um, so that's happening in May, right? So I already know I'm going to be there. So maybe two weeks before the conference, I could post something and say, hey, will you be at this year's ICM conference? I'd like to hook up with you. Here's my details. Let's meet each other. Uh, so I can schedule that now already. I can go into May and a week before the conference, I can schedule that. So you do know stuff that's going to happen in advance and it will just save you time because by the time you get there, you're like, oh, wow, that's done already. Be flexible with changes. That's obvious. That say for some reason you can no longer go to the conference that you please have to go back, change it or change the date or amend it in some way. So I don't want to ask who, who, who are the older people in the, in the audience or in the room or on the screens, but for those of you who were ever involved in direct marketing, and um, yes, I was one of those many years ago, come up with an idea, you get a nice envelope, you put it in there, a hundred of those with a franking machine, and you go to the post office and you post a hundred brochures. This is the service I'm offering. And you're hoping that people will write back, okay? Before email and people will say, yes, I take up your offer. Those people back then would have told you that a good engagement rate is 1%. Now that may sound very, very low, but to this day, 
that is still considered a good engagement rate online. What does that mean? That if you have 100 people on your Facebook page, at least one of them have to engage with your post. So when we're done here, and if you have Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or TikTok, or any of those, go back and see what the engagement rate is. Okay, so it's easy. So if you have 150 people on your page and you have three people who commented, then you just three divided by 150% and you'll get your engagement rate. Okay, half to almost 1% is average and anything below 0.5% means you're doing something completely wrong. So that means, yeah, let me take out my calculator. So if you have a thousand people on your Facebook page and less than five people interact with a comment or a post, uh, then, you, then you've got a problem with your engagement. Then there's something wrong with your content. Okay, a thousand times 0.5% is five. So hopefully with a thousand, you have 10 people at least, okay? Obviously, if you've got more, you can have more. So that is what we after year. We want to find out how can we up that percentage so that we have more people liking and commenting and sharing our posts. Right. Natalie, I'm going to ask if anyone has anything to ask uh, during our presentation. They are welcome to post it in the in the in the questions or the comments. What do we call that thing on the top? Um, and then at the end of the presentation, uh, we'll have a physical question and answer session. But uh, if if you have a question in the meantime, uh, pop it in there. Um, no need to 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 wait till end. All right, let me just see. Uh, okay, I can't see that right now on my screen, but I'm sure Natalie, you will let me know. Right. So, what are these steps for better engagement? So, I'm sure someone can come up with 10 or 20 or 100. Uh, I just thought for today's purposes, um, what are the top six steps? Um, I uh, am involved in social media for organizations. I set up and manage social media accounts. I do workshops on this. And in fact, I'm busy, busy uh, writing three chapters for a book on social media as well. So these are just things from my experience that I've seen work well. So I'm back to content. Are you getting your content right? How do you know whether your content is right or not? Do you ask someone? Uh, do you compare yourself with others? Why do you do? So my very first suggestion is that you would, before that, is go and look at other similar pages. You do know, or unless you didn't, if you go to your Facebook account and you go to insights in the back and you go to your audience, there's an opportunity for you to say, follow similar pages. In fact, it's called benchmarking. So in the benchmarking tab, click and type in the Facebook pages of organizations that you think are quite similar to yours. And Facebook will show you at least five of them, their results. How many people are interacting? How many posts? How many comments? And you will be able to get an idea of where you stand compared to those people that you consider your peers in your industry. I am a firm believer that you shouldn't always compare yourself with exactly people in your industry. I want to compare myself to the best in social media, maybe not my industry alone. Okay, if I compare myself to one of the top brands on social media being Red Bull, well, then it will be very sad because I'll see how absolutely terrible my stuff is. So maybe I'm not gonna quite choose that. But yeah, try and choose people that you respect or whose accounts that you follow. And please don't stick to just local stuff. Try and look at international stuff as well. Okay, let's get going. On your content, I think what is vital is that your content is of such a nature that it leads to conversation. Okay, we keep on saying that social media is about engagement and it's a conversation. How do you turn a normal post 
into conversation. For me, the easiest thing to do is just to make sure that my post ends with a question mark. Right, so instead of saying, okay, I'm just using the example of a church. Um, instead of saying, on Sunday, the message will be about forgiveness and so and so will be preaching. And there's a picture of so and so or a nice picture of forgiveness. I don't know how you make a designer image for that. So that's a good post and it tells you what ha what's happening, right? But I can turn that into a question and say, is there someone you need to forgive? Come and learn about forgiveness. Or Sunday sermon is going to be about forgiveness. Will we see you there? Just with a slight change, I can turn it into a question, which means now people feel they have to respond. And that's what you want. And you can't respond to a question unless you've read the question. So the same thing for anything you want to promote. Hey, um, our, let's say it's a radio station. Uh, let's say they have a sports feature. On six o'clock, at six o'clock, we'll have, be having our daily uh, sports show. And today we'll be talking about the Women's Cricket World Cup. Tell us in the meantime, what stood out most for you? So you're telling people what you're going to tell and immediately you ask. And people are responding. Wow, yo, I like that semi-final uh, against England. And those last few minutes were like really, really <laughs> quite um, nerve-wracking seeing what's going to happen. And people start sharing that. So people are really then engaging. Plus, by the time the show comes, you can say, hey, I've seen what you've said on our Facebook page. And let's get going with that. So it's all about a conversation. Acknowledge when someone says, I think you guys are doing a great job. I love what you're doing. Hey, I want to find out more. Please tell me where I can get this information. Um, I missed the last thing. Uh, will you be doing it again? Acknowledge, respond, answer. The worst is if I scroll through a page and I see hundreds and hundreds of comments and no one has even bothered to respond. This is what you want, right? You want engagement? You want a conversation? I'm asking you something. You answer or you ask a question and I ignore you. How is that going to endear me with you? How is that going to uh, uh, um, ensure that in future when you comment, uh, when you ask something, that I actually engage with you? So please make a point of acknowledging. Photos are easy to use, but don't forget videos. Don't forget gifts. And please don't ever, not sometimes, not seldom, in my opinion, ever post anything with our image. Even if you just want to say, oh, I don't know. Um, our phone lines are down. So please, if you want to call this week, our phone lines are down. Good announcement. It's worthwhile. People go on Facebook. I'm calling. I'm calling the office. No one is answering. Let me go to Facebook. Oh, their phone lines down. Then, I don't know, go find an image of a phone line, okay, or of an old-fashioned phone or something. But people see posts with images and GIFs and videos. And somehow, they just scroll past the ones that don't, even if you have some big announcement to make. Please know your audience and post the stuff that you know that will resonate with them. And if you're unsure of who your audience is, maybe you've got to go look in the back end of your analytics, and we'll get to that later, see who your audience is, and then post your content accordingly. And without sounding like discriminating against any group or age category, you're not going to talk the same way to 18-year-old ladies as you would to 65-year-old men. You're just not going to. So look at what the bulk of your audience is. Maybe you say, yeah, but we cover the whole spectrum. Maybe a certain show or a certain portion of your organization covers to the youth then make that a youth post and say, hey, dear youth, and then you post it like that. And for the rest, you say, hey, for the rest of the community. Or if your organization has a focus on one specific audience, then please make sure that you know them and that the content is in line with that. There's a danger that the tone 
and the style and the grammar. Are you using a GR8 instead of great and those things? There's a danger that those things are influenced by the person who's managing the post. Okay. Let's use the same example. Your person who does your social media is an 18 year old lady. Your target market is 65 year old men. Is she going to post the content in a style and a tone that is relevant to that audience? So make sure that the person or persons who's doing the social media can divorce their personal likes and dislikes and type of uh, a language and grammar from that of your target audience and specify the tone and the style of the content for your audience and let the people who do that manage it accordingly. For me, the single biggest thing of a, any post is, is it adding value to my life? Is it someone just ranting? I can't believe the petrol price has gone up again. Oh, what's happening with this load shedding? That stuff we know, people. I don't want to hear that. Say something that will add value to my life. Okay. Hey, if throwing out the whole load shedding thing, maybe it was just on my personal page. How about just saying, um, here is a way to get solar power in store at a cheap price or solar power that you can pay off on a monthly account with yourself. I don't do the stuff that will add value rather than the stuff that keeps on detracting, detracting, detracting. Right. I'm just going to see uh, if I have a question there. No. Okay. Okay. So let's move on from the content. That was the primary one. That's tip number one, and we have 22 minutes left to do other five tips. Stories and reels are also very important, and it's still part of the content. So we take the easy way out, and we say, oh, let's just post a, a photo. Okay, but stories and reels are very important. And when you're on your own Facebook page, you see at the stop, it says stories and reels. Basically, they're both short little video clips, but you can add photos and videos and text and music and in fact if you say oh, i don't know what music to add in facebook there's an option for you to add music that has been licensed by facebook already what's the difference i hear you ask between a story and a reel the reels are served to the wide public audience and anyone can see it whereas the stories are only served to your audience so if you look at the little clip on the side when i come to my facebook page on the top all those stories, okay, Wildekrans Wine in the State, Karen McPherson, Riverford Food, these are people that I already follow on Facebook. So I get their stories. When I click on Reels, it's every other person that's made a Reel. Some of them are crazy, silly stuff, I know it, but hey, you might make a Reel and it might reach the type of person that you were looking for. Okay, moving on. Now, there's the opportunity for you within the Facebook Meta Business Suite to create a reel. I trust if you have a Facebook account and you're running it for organization, by now you have converted it to a Meta Business account. Without that, you will not be able to be successful on Facebook or Instagram and any business organization that has a page. And I'm not talking about a personal profile. I'm not talking about a group, a page will have the opportunity to convert that standard page to a meta business suite page. And then you'll see everything in here. So it's easy to create a reel on your phone. If you want to do it on desktop, this is the place where you do it. Point number two on how to engagement, hashtags and mentions. This is vital. And I'm going to quickly take you through this. And if it's too quick, you can always come back to me. I'll give you my email address at the end. Um, but a hashtag and a mention, right? So here I produced a Twitter post yesterday, looking forward to our social media engagement chat tomorrow with ACM, right? So in the first sentence, looking forward to our social media engagement chat. I put a hashtag there. Some people, the states call it a pound key. I don't know what else you can call it. 
um, hashtag, yeah, there's some other names. But the moment I type that pound key and a word, that entire word becomes clickable. And then it shows me even how many people are using that word. So if you want to post something that's relevant to your audience, but can also attract others, remember to get more engagement, find a hashtag that can go with it. You can make up your own hashtags, but it's better to jump onto hashtags that exist. And my options there were social media marketing, social media workshop, social media engagement, that's one word, social media strategy, social media internet marketing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I chose the hashtag with the biggest amount of people talking about it. And then instead of just typing association of Christian media, I type the at sign. And when I type the at sign and I start typing their name, all the ACMs come up. Okay, obviously it was not AC Milan. Um, and as I tapped that up, up came their name and I was then able to click on it, add my photo and there my post is. So now I've done a hashtag and an ad sign. Two opportunities for people to engage with me. What does the ad sign mean? It means that the moment that tweet went out, ACM saw it on their Twitter account and hopefully on their Twitter account, they did something. They retweeted that or liked it or whatever. Had they been someone that I'm not connected to on Twitter, because remember on Twitter, you can type in a name even if you're not connected. That person might have seen it and said, oh, this is interesting. Let's see who these people are and let's follow them. And that is engagement. But then there's one other opportunity on Twitter. If you look to the bottom of the screen, you'll see there is a little thing that says tag people in a photo. And when I click on the tag people, it brings up a list of names that I can type in and I can tag up to 10 people in a photo. So in this post, I tagged myself. And when I'll show you now what, what that looks like. Meantime, I wanted to show you about the social media hashtag. I went back after I did that post into Twitter and I searched social media. And it showed me that in the last hour, 533 people used that hashtag. So had I been an outsider sitting here saying, I need to learn more about social media, hashtag social media. And I then search and then in the search result, I found my very own tweet. When I signed up to my own Twitter account, because Digital for Christ tagged me, and if you look to the left of the screen, third from the top, you'll see notifications, a bell, and a little blue number two. That is the notification. And when I click on that notification, it shows me that Digital for Christ posted something and tagged me. Right. That means that every single time that someone tags me, I see it. I wonder who are these people? Oh, interesting. Oh, I like what they're saying. I like what they're talking about. Click, let me join them and I follow them. More engagement and that's what we're all about. The same thing applies on Facebook. Here I went and did a post on Facebook. Will you be joining the? And I type in at and I start typing the name. And as I start typing the name, all the associations come up. Okay, Association of Christian Politicians. That could be very interesting. There can't be too many of those. Okay, no, that's just a joke. Okay, Association of Christian Media. I see the top one. I click the name and automatically they linked. Then I type hashtag social media. Hashtag social media. There's been 23 million posts on that. I see social media manager, management tips, so obviously I want to choose the hashtag with the most traffic. So there's an option, opportunity, sorry, for more people to find me via that hashtag. And that's what my post looked like on Facebook. Will you be joining? And you can see the name is clicked there and the hashtag. Two important things here is number one, I add an image. I always add an image. And if you came to my 
to the Digital for Christ page and you are reading this post, you will actually be able to click on Association of Christian Media right within the post and it will take you straight to their page. And now you can start following them. That's what you want for engagement. You can type, type in, uh, click on social media and you'll get everyone else who did that. And obviously, if you click on the, the domain, you'll go to my page where the details are. So I want you to start seeing these two icons as primary tools for generating better engagement. The ad sign, which is also in Afrikaans, I believe, called an upstart, and then the hashtag. Once you start using those things, you'll definitely see more engagement. Just a few tips on the hashtag itself. You have to start the word with a hashtag, and it has to be attached to the word. I sometimes see someone hashtag space, social space media. It has to be one word, and the hashtag has to be attached to it. Okay, when it's, there's no spaces, then that's the opportunity for it to be clickable. I often go to an Instagram account and I want to follow that account and it said this account is private. Okay, so if your account is private, then obviously people won't be able to see your traffic, see your posts freely, which means the impact of the hashtag will really much be negated. I don't know if it's a trend or if it's mostly <laughs> driven by teenagers, but um, so a famous hashtag is hashtag just saying. Okay, so people always say it, and now people are saying it actually on a normal conversation. Oh, how's it going? Oh, fine, listen, I haven't heard from you in a while. Hashtag just saying. So people would say that. But um, I sometimes see a post with hashtag. What a wonderful life I live. I mean, that's just too long. And then I see people posting something about travel and they do hashtag travel, hashtag um, traveling, hashtag I love traveling, hashtag safari. That's just too much. Okay. So my suggestion would be cap it at five, preferably two or three. Use hashtags that are not too long and try and find hashtags that are relevant to your audience, okay? They mustn't be too obscure. Just like, I love my life, do you love yours? I mean, that's just, that's just silly. And then try and limit them. We said try and limit them so you don't have hashtags, 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 hashtags at the bottom of your post. Some basics on hashtags. When it comes to hashtags, all the social media platforms have jumped onto it, okay? And so it applies to Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. So a hashtag can be shared across all of those. And that is something I would advise you to do, to share it across all of those. And also, hashtag your own organization. Come up with your own. If you are Kingfisher FM, put a hashtag Kingfisher FM. Put that one in every single one of your posts, and then put additional stuff that, you, that you're specifically talking about because you want people to start seeing that hashtag over and over. What's gonna be the next step? Others are gonna be posting about your organization and putting the, that, your hashtag in their posts. Then you are really getting to the stage where the engagement is gonna climb up because now other people are spreading your message. Right, time your post correctly. So I had a client and he paid us to manage his social media, but obviously as a client, he also has access to his own social media. He was still an admin. And then I leave for work or, or um, leave for home at five o'clock in the evening. And the next morning, eight o'clock, I'll be in the office. Just try not to work in the evenings, especially when you're on social media, you know, you work all the time. And then I'll see, oh, three o'clock this morning, he made a post. And then I'll contact him and say, hey man, why, why did you post three o'clock in the morning? No, man, I couldn't sleep. I was awake and I had this idea and I thought I might as well post it. And I'd say to him, you know, who saw that post? Just you, just you. And um, we call that a billboard in the desert. Beautiful, nice design, image, color, 
And the only person who knows about it, <laughs> the person who put it there. So please look at the times. There's an option for you to go into the back end of your um, insights and to see what is the best time. Something very basic that you can do on, on Facebook is I made a post here. Our final session uh, for TikTok will be next week. By the way, quick ad break. Next week, we're going to talk about TikTok for your ministry. Can it work? Is there such a thing? Is TikTok just for young people doing silly things with bottle tops and dances? Or can TikTok actually help my organization being at a ministry or whatever I do? So we're going to be talking about that. Uh, please make sure you sign up for that. Right. So there I do the post. But at the last minute, before I want to post that, this was last night, I thought, wow, wow, wow. I actually want to schedule this, right? I don't want it to go off now. So I make sure I click on the schedule your post, which then takes me to the Meta Business Suite and it immediately open up, opens up my calendar. I then find a date. So I click next to Wednesday, uh, uh, 8 March, and I um, say schedule post. And if I click schedule post, up comes opportunity for me to immediately put my time and date in. And I spoke about that previously. I said, listen, you can schedule your post. You don't have to do it on the time. Right. But look how smart Facebook is. It actually gives you something called active times. It says, we already know your audience. And we've looked at the times that they are online. And would you believe it? These are the times that we suggest that you schedule the post for. Why would I now go and say, sorry, Facebook, I know better. So it is important to schedule your posts when people are consuming the content, not when it is convenient for you or when you think it should go. If you're unsure, do this one at 10 o'clock on that day and do that one at 7 o'clock at that uh, time that Facebook suggests. And then once they're both done, Go back into your insights, look at the stats, see how many people clicked, like, shared, and commented. And then you say, sorry, Facebook, you were right. I, oh, sorry, Mark, this time I was right. Being Mark Zuckerberg. Right, so that was time. Next thing, engage with your influencers. Oh, I don't have influencers. Every organization on their Facebook, their Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, Snapchat, LinkedIn have influencers. The influencer is the person who's most active on your page. They're always commenting, saying thank you, or yes, or what about this, or you guys are great, or I'm challenging you to do this. Every single page of every single organization has them. Do you know who they are? Do you know who they are? Are you engaging with them? Are you sharing with them? Are you telling them something specific? Are you thanking them uh, either online, which is what they thrive on, uh, or just in real life? Send them a coffee voucher. Uh, invite them to come and meet you. Tell them to come to your to join you on your radio show or see your office. What are you doing? Because I promise you, there's someone out there who likes your stuff, who's got a bigger following than you. And if that person can tell his followers, hey, listen, these are cool guys to follow. Listen to what they're saying. See the stuff they're doing. Watch their video clips. Read their articles. It will have much more weight then you telling people, look how great we are. We all know that referral story. Anything from a hairdresser for a lady to a, to a, a mechanic to repair your car for guys. Okay, I can Google it. I can look it up in the yellow pages. Uh, for those who still remember what that was. But if a buddy says to me, you know what? I had my car service there. Uh, we moved into a new town three years ago. You can't just go online and say, where's the best hairdresser? Once we made friends, my wife said, hey, who do you use? I love your hair stuff. I use them. So we all know the power of referrals. And that same thing works with influencers. So if you go into your meta business suite and you go on the left-hand side where it says content, you can scroll down and there's a tab that says mentions and tags. And when I click mentions and tags, it shows me every single one who's spoken about my company okay either on facebook or on instagram and i can scroll down via date and i can see how many people clicked and liked and commented and i can look up one specific post and see wow they spoke about me and in the background you can see various posts 
what am I doing? I can now share that story. I can respond by saying, thank you for that post. I can say, cool that you guys liked it. I can say, hey, that is so excellent. Here's a voucher. Or yes, invite to my office. Or come and meet with me. Or yes, a free entry to our next event. I promise you, the effect that has on someone, on me, I'm posting stuff and someone says, hey, RP, I acknowledge it. Thank you very much. I'm like, wow. The very first thing I do is I go and post to all my audience. Hey, you guys won't believe it. I just got a free ticket or an invite or et cetera, et cetera. And others will go and look and say, hey, how can I be part of that? I like what they're doing. Let me do it too. Okay. So find out who your influencers are. Find out what makes them tick and see how you can engage with them. Okay, I'm just checking. Okay. So this is something we probably don't want to hear, but Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, TikTok, all of those organizations survive on one simple thing, that's advertising. And we are all using it for free. Never ever have I had to pay to sign into Facebook. Never had I had to pay to use Instagram or pay to use a YouTube video, but they have to make money to run those huge organizations. Facebook, Google, those people employ in excess of 30, 40, 50,000 people. So they make their money with ads. And if you really want to get serious about your social media, you're going to have to look at advertising. What budget are you going to allocate on a monthly basis? And what are you going to promote? What are you going to advertise? And how are you going to measure the results? And this is one very good way to increase your engagement. There's quite a few options. The very first one is starting with automated ads. Once again, you need to log into your Meta Business Suite and go to Advertising, and you'll see this option. If you've never done an ad on Facebook or Instagram, as you know, Instagram belongs to Facebook. And when you have an Instagram account, you can go into the back end to the Meta Suite and link your Instagram account to your Facebook account. And you can see all your Instagram posts and traffic and interaction and ads within Facebook as well. The automated ad thing is the best option. You click on it and ask you a few questions. Who's your audience? What age? Where do they live? What do you want with a post? Must they click to your website, subscribe to your newsletter, blah, blah, blah. And then it says, what budget do you want to spend? And it says, let Facebook find the right ad for you. It will then draw in some of your images that you've already got. If not, it will say click free stock pick images and they will give you access to free images that you can use and make your post live. If you want to do a specific post just on Instagram, you can do that. You can get more subscribers. If you have a newsletter, these are all different types of ads. One that will just send people to your website. If you want to boost a post, that's a similar as automated, but that's now if you understand ads a little bit better. And now you'll be able to choose your own audience, city, country, um, language, uh, likes, age, gender. And you can say, I only want this ad to be seen by ladies between 45 and 55 who live within one hour of Durban. Um, and you can even go further to say who have a degree or who are interested in running or who are Christian and whatever people have posted on their profile, set it up, that will target that. Promoting your page, that's quite good. Just to say, this is our social media page. I want more people to see our page. Promote your business locally. Once you click on that, and let's say for instance, you're a radio station in East London. When you click promote locally, it will automatically open up a map and it will show, yes, East London, and it's got a 50K radius and we'll advertise only there. And if someone is 60 kilometers away, they will not see that ad. It'll be highly localized. That way you're not wasting money on a huge audience or huge target market when you know it's not, uh, or a huge audience when you know it's not your target market. Get more leads. 
that's something that I like to use for employing people or asking specific questions. You can ask two or three questions within Facebook. Do you like this? Would you buy that? Do you live there? Et cetera, et cetera. And people will answer those questions within Facebook and the results will come to you within Facebook. People spend a lot of time on their phones. Um, I'm currently busy writing a chapter on mobile marketing for a new book. And just this morning, before the session, I was on uh, the, the, the Facebook audience, for instance, in South Africa. There are 25 million South Africans on Facebook, and currently 82% of all internet in South Africa is consumed via phones. And the next three years, it will go to 95. Okay, so it is good to get the leads on your phone of what's happening. People want to type in something on their phone. They don't want to go from Facebook out to the internet. Some people who buy data, buy social media specific data. And if you say, here's a lead form, click it, and it's going to another page, they might like, ah, oh, I don't want to go to another page. Um, and getting more messages can be Messenger. And as you know, WhatsApp belongs to Facebook. So a very good thing to do is to link your WhatsApp to your Facebook. And people can actually click, yes, I want to learn more. And it will open up WhatsApp. So that is just another opportunity to increase your engagement. The last point, as we are a few minutes over, post, analyze, repeat. Okay. I can go into my analytics, my insights, and I can see every single post I've made. And I can see how many people click how many likes, how many have I reached? And I can see that post reached 335 people and that post reached 220 people and that one reached one person. And I can look at this and say, wow, let me do more of the stuff that generates more traffic. But do I even know who my target market is? I can find that in the back, how many followers, the age, the gender. So if I look on the left-hand side here, I can look at my Facebook and I can see 71% are women. And the bulk of those are between 35 and 44. So that's where I should focus my content. The style of the content, the images, whatever. If I'm on Facebook, that is the target. Where do they live? I can even get every single city of where they live. So no use, I post st stuff to people out of it. And I can even see every country. Oh, wow, look, I've got 53.8% audience in South Africa, 31% in Kenya and 4.3% in Namibia. So let me make sure that my content mix is maybe for every three posts about South Africa, I do two about Kenya and one about Namibia. Remember, we're talking about engagement and I want to post the content that people will like and people will comment on and they will share. And if I understand that and if you talk to me and if I'm sitting in a conference or in a conversation, or in a church, and someone says something that speaks to me, then I feel like, wow, you're taking notice. You're knowing, you know that I'm here. You want my engagement. And that is why you need to know who you're talking to, and your content has to be tailored accordingly. Some extra tools to help you plan, schedule, management, and hashtag generator design. I want you to look at monday.com, hootsuite.com and tweetdeck.com. These are all tools that allow you to schedule your posts in advance. So I can click on that and I can write my posts and I can walk away and it's scheduled. If I'm not sure about hashtags, I can actually go to something on the internet. You don't have to worry about the URL is small there. You can just type in hashtag generator and you say, my hashtag has something to do with a gospel conference or a TV show, or a, a radio interview, and they will help you find the right hashtag. In terms of design, if you're not competent in design, like me, I know nothing about design, and I love canva.com. It's a free tool that allows me to design anything for any social media post. I don't have to worry about the dimensions. I type in LinkedIn, profile pic, it automatically knows the dimensions. I can type in Facebook event cover. 
or Instagram real video. And it knows exactly the dimensions. And then I use it every single day. Canva.com. Right. That is as much as we can squeeze in one hour and six minutes, giving us some additional time for questions and answers. Um, you may have a question now or not. You may feel you don't want to ask it or when it comes to you later. Please just take note of my email address, yapi at digital and the number four christ.co.za. I always answer any questions via email, zero, gratis and for nothing. So please email me if you have any questions, something that I skipped that maybe was too fast. Uh, I'd love to just see you get better engagement on your social media. And if, if you get better engagement, then uh, we'll all be happier and it will definitely have an impact on those who uh, receive your content. Uh, over to you for some questions, Natalie. Yes. Uh, thank you, Yaki. I learned a lot of things there that I never knew about before, such as um, how to, such as that Facebook can suggest the best time to do a post and all of that. Lots of very, very helpful things. Um, any questions from, from you, from Stefan, Adele, and Tanya? No, any thank questions? you. I've, I've learned a lot today. I mean, just the fact of the hashtag generator, I didn't know there was a link to actually do that. And also like Yarpy, I struggle with creating visual content. So by using Canva.com and so forth, I think that'll actually create a lot of value for me. Fantastic, thank you. Very good, very good feedback. Um, I see a comment in the chat. Um, okay. Okay, sure. Tanya, I get that. Thank you. I look forward to seeing you next week. Okay, any other questions, comments even? I, I don't know if you covered this. I just wanted to do, check if you could just reiterate turnaround time on um, your engagements. Uh, how quick should you respond, especially if it's something to do with programming and you have to look for an answer? What do you think um, is a good turnaround time for response, especially on like a Facebook? Because we're kind of not on Facebook all the time. Um, so, but, uh, or should we have somebody constantly on Facebook Messenger kind of responding to questions? So that's an excellent question because it's a huge challenge because the expectation, which, which is very unrealistic and unfair of the user, is like instant. They want instant gratification. Um, and they, when someone posts something, they um, they think there's someone on the other side waiting just for their comment, waiting for their message. So um, the answer is actually you should post a comment uh, and reply instantly. But that's not practical. It's not possible because you can't always do it. So I have a couple of rules. First rule is um, I would, for instance, in my Facebook, either in the back end where the about us is or in regular posts say, hey, we get a lot of comments and posts and questions and messenger. We always try and respond within. And then you mention a time that you feel you can respond in. And I would not let that be more than two hours. Okay. Firstly. Secondly, uh, unless you're a 24 hour business with 24 hour people, I usually say, and if you post something after five, we definitely get back to you by nine o'clock the following day, okay? The danger is if you someone sits there in bed at night at 10 o'clock at night, I wonder if these guys, are, and they post it, and you happen to be sitting in bed, and you're the admin, and you answer. You've now opened that Pandora's box to say, wow, I can post any time of the day and ask questions any time of the night. And that, to me, is risky. I'd rather stay away from that. But... If you're a radio station and you have a show from one to three in the morning and someone asks a question and you're expecting there to be listeners, then you say to the host of the show, you got to look in and every two hours you got to respond. Um, mm -hmm. But be careful, but the, the, the expectation is instant. Um, and 
the more you can meet that expectation, the greater the acknowledgement and the engagement you will get from your audience. That I guarantee you. Um, I, for instance, have a philosophy. If I get an email inquiry to my business, immediately pick up the phone and call. And I promise you, if I could have a camera there, every time I do it, it feels like the people are falling off their chairs. Like, but, but I just sent it. I said, yeah, so here I am. I'm calling you now. And they so flabbergasted that someone can respond so quickly. Okay, I can't always do it sometimes on the, I'm on, I'm on the road. But if you have that philosophy and that mentality that we want to respond to people, I'm asking you, how are you? And you wait two days to say, thank you, I'm well. What the heck is going on? So I'm pushing out stuff. You're responding, but you're ignoring me. So yeah, I would say do it as quickly as possible, but internally, maybe maybe set a rule that says we have to respond within two hours. Others, otherwise, it goes dead and people forget about us. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Sim. Okay, any other questions? So I know it's a lot. I know it's a lot. Um, last week I hosted a one-day workshop and yesterday I sent everyone the slides and said, I trust you enjoyed it. And the first woman replied, said, no, it was horrible. I, it was just way too much. I'm totally overwhelmed now. I don't know where to start. I'm like, okay, well, that was not what we intended, but um, it is a lot. But if you start experimenting with some of these things and you see the results, I mean, wow. Every time that I prepare a presentation, and I've done it many times, I have to start from scratch. I can't copy and paste anymore because the stuff is changing all the time. I physically mm -hmm. finished this presentation last night. And in the process, I saw a few new things that wasn't there for my workshop I did last week. So don't worry, it's challenging to all of us. And it's changing the whole time. And they keep on wanting to make it better, but in the process, they make it more complicated. Uh, but that A-B split testing thing, I mean, I didn't know about that until last week. But how fantastic is that? Go into your meta suite, find A-B split testing. You set up two posts and you say, I want it to be seen for an hour, six hours, 12 hours, or 24 hours. And Facebook will put both out. And then Facebook will take the winning post and let that continue forth because they will see which post generated the most uh, engagement. So that tool is there. Years ago, when I started the internet, we charged people lots of money to do an A-B split testing email newsletter. Um, and now it's just within Facebook and it's free. So just jump in there and try those things. And it's always those people who try it and who do it who say, I get the results. Um, so yeah, it's, it's about that. Um, can I just ask, will the slideshow be made available to us? Natalie? Yes. Yes, I will make the video available to you afterwards. Um, but if it's okay with you, I can also send you the presentation itself as well. Okay. Uh, what I like more about the video is if you view the slides in, in, the, uh, um, uh, in isolation, there are a lot of slides that don't have descriptions or explanation. So mm. I put a lot of text to it, but often I don't do all of it because I actually want people to pay attention and listen. So maybe the, the Zoom video uh, would be your best option because you'll be able to pause and play and see what's happening there and hear the explanation. Yeah, no, it's great. Um, it's just, I took screenshots of all the slides yeah. and I think I missed okay. one. <laughs> I missed one, sure. maybe two. So if I can have the slide, I can do both. Great, great. And yeah, you. please, if you have questions, email me and say, hey, I mean, there's someone here, a local armed response security company. They came to the workshop last week and they said, please review our pages. We don't know what's going on. And I review the pages and I'll say, wow, here's my suggestions. Some of it's free. Some of it will cost you. I don't care. Just decide what you want to do. But just make an effort to get your stuff up to a better standard and then at the risk of wanting to preach, I'm a firm believer that we as Christians have to set the bar for everything. And we don't have mm -hmm. to look at the world to say they're the best. They should be looking at us. And I believe that our brochures and our social media and our posters and stuff mustn't look like someone is doing it from home. It must look professional. 
the tools are there for you to make it look professional and for us to be able to have an impact on the world, not just in what we believe, but in the way we portray our organizations and everything that we do and say. Okay, thank you very much. Right. Okay, thank you very much, Yopi. Thank you for this session. It's been lovely. Um, next week will be the last session in this four-part training series. It will be TikTok for Ministry. Um, I know that both you, Adele, and Stefan are registered to attend it. So we will see you next week. Thank you very Great. much. See you guys then. Thank Looking you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.